Update. Confirmed that he is 100% cheating, which sucks but was also vindicating and actually makes me feel better about the gut feeling I had about the girl. Thank you all so much for all the kind comments and messages I have received. It's been so helpful to read similar stories and to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. The next few months will be rough, but I have hope I will come out better on the other side. Sorry for how long this will be, but it is such a bizarre and unique situation, it requires some context. My partner, 31-year-old male, and I, 28-year-old female, have been together for almost nine years. We always had the best relationship, full of love and joy. We had shared visions of the future and a very similar financial and ambitious mindset. We fought here and there, but in those nine years, we never had any major conflict. We both love each other's families, and they love us. Everyone always said they were jealous of our relationship because it seemed so effortless, and it was. We got married about six weeks ago, and everything leading up to that point seemed fine. We had a wonderful wedding day and both read heartfelt vows and cried during the ceremony. I had no reason to believe anything was wrong. About two weeks after the wedding, we started talking more about the honeymoon, which we planned to take later in the year and other plans, and he seemed very uneasy with making future plans. He started saying that we shouldn't rush and that we just got married and to take it easy. I didn't understand why, as I wasn't rushing anything, and this was the plan we had both agreed to earlier, to have the honeymoon about seven months after the wedding. Eventually he told me that the whole marriage thing is freaking him out, and he's realizing that maybe it's not something he really wanted for himself, that he's feeling weird that we've been together all through our 20s, and that I'm the only relationship he has ever had, and he never had enough time to be single. He says he maybe proposed out of societal pressures and because he just felt it's what you were supposed to do. He says I'm perfect and he loves me and he just wishes that we had met five years later so he would have had that time to be on his own. I said those are all valid feelings, but what are the options here? It's okay to mourn the past, but we are already married. He said he had some doubts before the wedding, but felt it was already too late as so many people had money in it, and I was so excited about it, and he didn't want to crush my dreams. In hindsight, we both agreed it would have been better had he mentioned it then. We've now been discussing this for a month. No fights. We just both end up getting very emotional. Have tried individual and couples therapy. And I left the house for a couple weeks just to give us both some mental space. We agreed we were still together during that time frame, though. When I came back, he ended up asking for a break, where we were both single for a few months then reconvene at an agreed-upon date and see where we are. I was completely shocked by this and told him that I don't believe in that. We either figure it out together or we are broken up for good. I asked if there is anything else we can do within the relationship to try to get him to a better mental state, and he said he didn't think so. He really feels the only option is for us to not be together right now. I am completely devastated and blindsided by this. I think he is going through some sort of grass is greener syndrome where he's wondering what else is out there and mourning not being single for longer. But if he does end up going on dates and realizing that it's not as good as he thought, I don't want him to think that I will be waiting on the sidelines as a safety net. This may or may not be related. I asked him if there's someone else. He said no. But he has been spending some time with a female friend he met at the gym a couple months ago. They work out together too, three times a week, which I don't usually have a problem with. He's a big gym guy and very social, and has had other female workout buddies before with no issues. However, he has also started spending time with her after the workout, grabbing a coffee or a meal together and being shifty about it with me. This is new for him. While I don't think anything physical has happened, I definitely think there is some emotional cheating there, and I wonder if this has impacted his thoughts at all. He swears she has nothing to do with the way he's been feeling and that he's been feeling this way for a while, which I do believe, but maybe this has intensified his feelings. He still tells me he loves me every day and is very affectionate with me. He is also apologetic about the way he feels, saying he wishes he didn't feel this way, and he realizes how unfair it is to me. I cannot imagine giving up nine years of history together, especially when we just had such a beautiful wedding that everyone was so excited to be a part of. But the way he has acted for the last month is so unlike him and doesn't seem at all like the person I have been with all these years. Is this salvageable at all? Also, if anyone has similar stories at all, please share. Now for a few comments before the update. 
Comment 1. But he has been spending some time with a female friend he met at the gym a couple of months ago. This isn't just related. It's the entire story. Reading your post, I was 100% certain there was someone else. And you just confirmed it. People don't flip like this right after a marriage, unless they are cheating. At least emotionally, possibly physically also. He's actively having an affair. I'd hire a private investigator and see if you can get evidence of it. Because it's so soon after your marriage, you might be able to get it annulled and not go through the divorce process. Don't have intimacy with him. Get STD tested immediately. I cannot imagine giving up nine years of history together. Unfortunately, you don't get a choice in this. He has already given up the history. It's gone and it's done. He's leaving you for his gym buddy. You're just in shock and haven't quite caught up to that reality yet. I'm so sorry. Comment two, are you me? My ex left six months after our marriage, citing similar reasons, after we'd been together for 16 years. Sure, we had some challenges like all relationships, but on the whole, we were committed, had similar goals in life, wanted the same things out of life, etc. Completely blindsided after she returned from a family trip, where I later learned she'd had an emotional affair at least, and was telling everyone how in love she was with this new person, I don't have a lot of advice only here to tell you that the divorce was hands down the best thing to happen to me. It hurt a lot, and it took years for me to get healthy again, thanks infection. 19. Now I'm a completely different person, way more in touch with who I am and genuinely happy. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around for this update. So after all the therapy and heart to heart talks, things took a turn for the worse. I found out he's been lying to me. Remember the gym friend? Well, I caught them together at a cafe, and it wasn't just a friendly coffee. They were holding hands across the table, looking into each other's eyes. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. I confronted him later that day, and he finally admitted that they had kissed. It was like a soap opera, but my life. I was furious, but also, in a twisted way, relieved. I wasn't crazy. My gut had been right all along. He begged for forgiveness, said it was a mistake, that he was confused and lost. But I was done. I told him we needed to separate, for real this time. No breaks, no gray areas. I moved out the next day. The aftermath was messy. Our families were involved, friends took sides. It was all out in the open now, and the sympathy was overwhelming. But I didn't want sympathy. I wanted the past nine years of my life back. Then, as if things couldn't get any more complicated, I found out I was pregnant. It was a shock, to say the least. I hadn't planned on this, not with everything falling apart. I told him, and for a moment I saw the man I married. He was supportive, said we'd figure it out together, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was just an option to him, not a priority. I decided to keep the baby. It was a tough decision, but it felt right for me. He said he wanted to be involved, but I could see the hesitation. He was still seeing her, the gym friend. I guess some people just can't help themselves. I started to rebuild my life slowly. I got a new place, focused on my health, and prepared for the baby. It was hard doing it all on my own, but I was determined. I wasn't going to let him walk all over me anymore. I had to be strong for myself and for my child. As for him, well, last I heard, the gym friend had moved on to someone else. I guess the grass wasn't greener after all. It's funny how life works out sometimes. Thanks for reading this far. It's been pretty tough, but I'm getting through it. Am I the idiot for leaving my fiance after he said he'd divorce me? If I can't have kids within two years, debated making a throwaway, but figured, no idiots here, I'll just post even though I know my partner lurks here and he knows my username. If you see this, hi, yes, this is about you. My boyfriend, 33 year old male, and I, 33-year-old female, recently got engaged. We've had our ups and downs, but for the most part, are on the same page with what we want out of life. Both of us want to hold successful careers and also be present as dedicated parents. We are in complete agreement that we want at least two biological children. Neither of us are open to sperm, egg donors, surrogacy, or adoption. IVF is fine. We've had several discussions where my partner states 
that if we try to have children and it doesn't happen in a timely manner, one, two years, he would divorce me and find a younger woman who could fulfill his dreams of being a father. Naturally, this makes me sick to my stomach. I acknowledge that fatherhood is important to him, and I would do absolutely everything in my power to ensure our chances are as good as they can be. But if fate sees fit to not give us children despite our best efforts, I would feel horrible to be discarded. I feel like I'm about to marry someone who values me just for my uterus and what that part of my anatomy can provide him. If we discovered somehow that my partner was infertile, I would not leave him. I believe in the in sickness and in health. I choose to be with him because I value our relationship together. Would I be devastated to not be a mother? Absolutely. But I would not abandon my partner. Half of my brain is screaming that this is a red flag. The other half is confused and hurt because I genuinely love this man and want to be with him. I can't reconcile the rest of his amazing qualities with this jarring, hurtful perspective. It's not like our life goals are different. It's not like it's an incompatibility where one person wants kids and the other person doesn't. We want the same things. I just believe that if we try everything possible and it doesn't happen, then maybe that's for a reason and I would be content with the life we can still build together. He would prioritize his desire to be a father over our relationship. Wedding is six months away and I'd rather not walk into a situation I might regret later. Edit. Thank you all for the comments and the DMs. I don't have the emotional energy to respond to everyone individually, but I read them all. There's a lot to think about and process and grieve, but I appreciate your time and loving bluntness. Edit two. For more info, fertility tests have been done. We are waiting on results. I've been clear that if he were the infertile one, I would have no problem with staying. He has said if he is the infertile one, he fully expects me to leave him. Even though I've said multiple times that's not in line with my values. I think that's telling. And yes, we have discussed what might happen if one of us falls ill, gets physically disabled, etc. And his belief is that the non-ill spouse, whoever it may be, has the right to leave and achieve their goals of parenthood elsewhere. Same situation here. I could never imagine leaving my injured spouse, but I guess loyalty is dead. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I will share my story. My husband and I met while being Girl Scout leaders together. We both liked and wanted kids, bought a house with room for kids and got married. Two years into the marriage, we started trying. It didn't happen. So we went to the OBGN and got checked out. There's nothing wrong with both of us on that end. I have an autoimmune illness. We got a round of hormone therapy and it made me miserable. We talked and both said we are on the fence about going forward with hormones, IVF, mostly due to my health. I asked him, does this mean divorce? Because I know you want kids. His reply, you want kids too. There's a difference between not wanting and not being able to have them. I love you and I'm not leaving you over this. Your fiance is saying the opposite here. He doesn't love you enough to see any other life with you if there aren't kids in the picture. This is a huge red flag and you should heed it. Comment two, it's a red flag. When I was 21, I had to have surgery that resulted in the removal of half my reproductive system. My boyfriend proposed that night in the hospital. I don't remember it. It's a joke between us now, three decades later. He proposed then because he knew that I would worry. I knew he dreamed of being a dad. He even worked part-time at a daycare center as a teen. Now though, my ability to bear children was in jeopardy. He wanted to show me that I meant more to him than our hypothetical children. We were lucky and had three before I couldn't carry anymore, at 29 years old. That's how a real partner lives life. Go look for your 100% man. Time to toss the 90% man. Edited to add, this was a long time ago. We are interracial and I was a career woman. That is no adoption agency. Would have picked us back then and fertility medicine was really just becoming mainstream. Now for the update, Thanks for sticking around for this update. So, the wedding got called off. Yeah, you heard that right. After the last post, things went downhill fast. We got the fertility test results back. Guess what? I'm perfectly fine, but he's not. The irony of the situation wasn't lost on me. He was so sure I'd be the one with issues, but life has a funny way of throwing curveballs. 
He was devastated, and I tried to be supportive, but he pushed me away, said he needed time to think. I gave him space, but that's when the real drama started. He started going out more, coming home late, and I had a gut feeling something was off. I did a little digging and found out he was seeing someone else. Some young girl from his gym, barely in her 20s. Talk about a cliche. I confronted him and it was ugly. He said he needed to feel like a man again. That he was entitled to find someone who could give him what he wanted, since I apparently couldn't. As if it was my fault. The nerve of him, right? I was furious and heartbroken. I packed my bags and left that same night. Moved in with my sister across the country. It was tough starting over, but I got a new job, made some friends, and was finally feeling like myself again. Then, out of the blue, he shows up at my door, begging for forgiveness. Said the girl was pregnant, but he realized that he still loved me and wanted to be with me. I couldn't believe the audacity. I told him it was too late. He made his choice, and now he had to live with it. I shut the door in his face and didn't look back. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. But I knew it was right for me. I heard through the grapevine that the girl lost the baby, and he was left with nothing. I don't wish that kind of pain on anyone, but maybe now he'll understand that you can't just use people for your own desires and not expect to get burned. Life's been well, interesting, but I'm getting by. I've learned a lot about myself and what I deserve. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for getting mad? At my boyfriend for questioning my late night telehealth call? Hi, everyone. I'm in a bit of a dilemma and need some input. My healthcare situation has been a mess for the past year or so. My family doctor closed his practice in fall of 2023, leaving me without a primary care provider amidst an ongoing health issue that has caused me unbearable pain. Unbearable, as in, I've visited the ER thrice since October 2023. Given the circumstances, I turned to a telehealth service in December 2023. The system in my country, Canada, is overwhelmed, and it's difficult to get timely and thorough care. My boyfriend is very aware of this. My telehealth doctor sent me for ultrasounds, which revealed two hernias. After a long wait, about five months, I finally got an appointment for a surgical consultation. The telehealth doctor overseeing my case called me at 9 p.m. on a Friday tonight to confirm that I received notice of my surgical consult scheduled for Monday. I appreciate this call because any mix-up would mean waiting another five months for a reschedule. Also because most doctors here don't bother with follow-ups. However, when my boyfriend overheard the call, he was immediately upset about the time of the call. He argued that it was highly inappropriate for my doctor to contact me so late. I tried to explain the urgency and the typical after-hours work that telehealth doctors do, but he wasn't having it. The discussion took a turn when he began using air quotes while referring to my doctor and revisited a previous time where I had a pap smear done by my previous male family doctor, questioning the appropriateness of it, despite my assurances that it was strictly professional and that doctor was the most competent I've had in my 27 years on earth. I acknowledged his feelings, saying I understood why it might seem odd to him, given that telehealth and such late interactions weren't common during his time. He's Generation X. But no matter how much I tried to reassure him of the professionalism involved, he accused me of defending the doctor. The conversation escalated, and in frustration, I told him in tears he was bullying me with his continuous accusations and lack of trust. This led him to say that I was turning things around, thus labeling me as the bully. I told him I didn't want to argue, and I thought we were on the same page until he slammed the bedroom door on me and muttered that I don't ever back down. I'm really at a loss here. I was trying to stand my ground and explain the situation from a rational perspective, but now I'm second guessing myself. I'm wondering what went wrong here. Is there anything I could have done differently? Now, for a few comments before the update, comment one. Such late interactions weren't common during his time. He's a Gen X. Oh, please. I'm an older Gen X and have adapted quite well to current times. He's just in jerk. Revisited a previous time where I had a pap smear done by my previous male family doctor, questioning the appropriateness of it. What? Kind of surprise that your controlling boyfriend is mad. 
that your male family doctor did a pap test on you. You're only 27 and you're with a man nearly my age who completely sucks. It's not Gen X, it's abuser. Look up Darvo. That's what he did to you, by the way. Comment two, controlling and jealous, irrational behavior. Imagine being 49 and jealous of a doctor for doing a pap smear. Emotionally manipulative and hurtful. Darvo behavior. Emotionally immature. Dating someone half his age. OP, please think hard about if being in a relationship with this person is really the best for your mental, emotional, and physical well-being. There's a reason women his age don't want him. Younger women are easier to control. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking with me on this. So after that huge fight with my boyfriend, things got even more complicated. The surgical consult was a disaster. I showed up and the doctor was running late, like really late. I waited for three hours. And when I finally got in, he looked at my file for maybe two minutes and said, we need to operate immediately. I was shocked. I mean, I knew it was serious, but this was next level. I called my boyfriend and he was actually supportive. He said, do what you need to do. I'll be here. That felt good, considering the mess we were in just days before. But then the doctor dropped another bomb. The surgery was risky with a chance it could lead to more complications. I was scared, but the pain was too much. I agreed to the surgery. The night before the operation, I couldn't sleep. I kept thinking about all the things that could go wrong. My boyfriend tried to calm me down, but I could tell he was worried too. He never says much, but I know him. He was pacing around the room and that's his tell. The day of the surgery, I was a mess. They wheeled me into the operating room and the last thing I remember was the anesthesiologist saying, you'll be fine. When I woke up, the doctor was there with good news. The surgery was a success and I should be pain-free once I recover and I couldn't believe it. It felt like a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders. Recovery was tough. I had to stay in the hospital for a week and my boyfriend was there every day. He brought me books, my favorite snacks, and just sat with me. It was nice and it felt like we were getting back to a good place. But then, when I got home, I found out my job wasn't as secure as I thought. My boss called and said they had to cut back my hours because I'd been away for too long. I was devastated. I needed that job, especially with the medical bills piling up. My boyfriend saw how upset I was and did something unexpected. He talked to his boss and managed to get me a part-time job at his company. It wasn't much, but it was something. I was so grateful. Things started looking up after that. I was healing, I had some income, and my boyfriend and I were doing better than ever. He apologized for how he acted before the surgery, and I forgave him. We both realized that life's too short to fight over silly things. So here I am, two weeks later, feeling better and with a new job. It's been pretty hard on us, but I'm glad for where things ended up. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.